Welcome to Wizomies, on this day series. Let's get straight to business and see what happened on the 2nd of October in history. In 1187 the Siege of Jerusalem took place. Salah ad-Din, known as Saladin, led the Muslim military campaign against the Crusader states in the Levant. Levant stretched on the territories of present-day Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, Israel, Palestine and part of Turkey. Saladin captured Jerusalem after 88 years of Crusader rule. The people captured by Saladin's army in Jerusalem, were allowed to buy their freedom by paying gold coins. Those that could not pay were sold into slavery. Latin Christians responded in 1189, by launching the Third Crusade. In 1535, Jacques Cartier, discovered the present site of Montreal. The island of Montreal is five times larger than Manhattan. A tunnel and 15 bridges link the island, where Montreal is built, to the mainland. The city is named after Mount Royal, the triple peak hill in the heart of the city. Montreal is known for its underground city, which is a series of interconnected tunnels beneath, stretching on over 32 kilometers. The city is the birthplace and home of the world-famous Cirque du Soleil, possibly one of Montreal's most famous exports. Montreal is also the birthplace of the first search engine. Before Google became so common, that we turned it into a verb, three computer science students created a searchable database called Archie. It paved the way for the web search engines we're so familiar with today. During Prohibition, Montreal was one of the preferred Canadian destinations for Americans hopping over the border for alcohol and places to gamble. The province of Quebec, where Montreal is based, produces and exports more than 85% of the world's maple syrup. The city is currently the third largest producer of video games in the world with major companies like Ubisoft, Eidos Interactive, EA, Strategy First, and many more. In 1928, the Opus Dei was founded by a Catholic priest. The name comes from a vision in which he allegedly saw written, Opus Dei, which in Latin means work of God. As per their own scope, Opus Dei proposes to help ordinary citizens to lead a fully Christian life, without modifying their normal way of life, their daily work, their aspirations and ambitions. In 1958, Guinea declared its independence from France. Guinea is richly endowed with minerals. It possesses an estimated quarter of the world's proven reserves of bauxite, which is used for the production of aluminum. Guinea also has large quantities of high-grade iron ore, significant diamond resources, gold deposits and uranium. Guinea's mineral wealth makes it potentially one of Africa's richest countries, but its people are among the poorest in West Africa. In 2000, the Rhinedale algorithm is chosen as the advanced encryption standard. This cipher algorithm was developed by two Belgian cryptographers, Joan Damon and Vincent Ryman. At its most basic level, encryption allows us to encode information so that only those who know the encrypting key can decrypt the data. Without the key, it looks like random letters and symbols. With the key, the jumble of seemingly random text turns back into its original message. The earliest types of encryption were simple, using techniques like changing each letter in a sentence to the one that comes after it in the alphabet. As people got better at cracking codes, the encryption had to become more sophisticated. You may be familiar with the Enigma machine and its importance. The device was used to protect commercial and military communication. It was employed extensively by Nazi Germany during World War II, in all branches of the German military. Enigma had a rotor, that scrambled the 26 letters which were typed at one end of the communication. The person at the other end would see different than entered letters being read. The relation between the pressed keys and the lit letters were changed with each key press, so it was almost impossible to decipher the text, without having the same setup on both ends. Britain and its allies exploited Enigma and coded messages sent by the Nazis, and used the information during the war. Many historians consider that it shortened the war and may even have altered its outcome. AES, which uses the Rhinedale algorithm, has been adopted by the US government and is now used worldwide. It is used in messaging apps like WhatsApp or archivers like WinZip. When it comes to cybersecurity, AES is one of those acronyms that you see popping up everywhere. That's because it has become the global standard of encryption and it is used to keep a significant amount of our communication safe. Rhinedale is basically a symmetric key algorithm, meaning the same key is used for both encrypting and decrypting the data. For example if you would like to encrypt the encouragement, subscribe to Wizomy channel with a key like let's say. Now you know, what do you think that the algorithm would output? Would you be able to decipher it? Let's find out, but before, we'd like to kindly ask you to subscribe to our channel if you enjoy our daily episodes. 
In a simplified approach, AES works like this. First, the plain text, subscribe to Wizomy channel, is divided into blocks, each word on a column, each letter on a row, obtaining a matrix of letters. Then, key expansion will be made, this means that the initial key, now you know, is used to obtain several keys that the algorithm will use later for each encryption stage. First, the key letters are added to each text block in the matrix, mixing them. After this, all letters are being substituted with other letters based on a predefined relation table. Then the elements on the rows of the matrix are shifted to the left, mixing the already ciphered text. After this the columns are mixed. Then each of the previous generated keys is added to each block. When a 256-bit key is used, there are 13 rounds of this process. No wonder the output would have been impossible for you to guess as it is this. It seems like a completely random string of characters, but it is actually the result of many different mathematical operations being applied to it again and again. To go from the cipher text back to the plain text of the original message, everything is done in reverse. Since this is so complicated, we prefer you invite your friends to subscribe to our channel in plain English. Computers will always do what they need to do in terms of security, provided that you see the tiny lock that confirms your data is being encrypted. But we should always remember that us, humans, are the weakest link in the internet security chain, and we need to be extra cautious when using it. Thank you for watching this episode. If you like this video please hit the like button and subscribe to our Wizomy channel. See you tomorrow.